ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به توكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له اما بعد That's just being a few days away from the blessed month of Ramadan. Today I just want to share a brief reminder on an important act of worship related to Ramadan that we that we sometimes overlook or neglect. And that is the importance of dua. So when we think about Ramadan, we think about fasting, tarawih, suhoor, iftar, laylatul qadr, itikaf, But sometimes we forget that Ramadan is also the month of du'a. It is a month when du'as are answered, often in miraculous ways. And there are several ahadiths that we can draw from uh, to make this conclusion. Number one, the famous hadith where the Prophet wasallam stated that when Ramadan comes, the doors of Allah's mercy are open and the doors of Jahannam are closed. Some of the commentators have stated that when his when Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that the doors of Allah's mercy are open, this means that our du'as are answered. Right? If if the doors of Allah's mercy are open, then that means our du'as will be answered, because Allah's mercy manifests itself in this world through answering our du'as. Furthermore, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. In several ahadith, when he lists those people whose du'as are never rejected, he mentions the fasting person. For example, in one hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said, Three people, their du'as are never rejected. The du'a of the traveler, the du'a of a parent for their child, and the du'a of the fasting person. So from this hadith and all the different versions of it, We can conclude that if we make du'a while we are fasting, the du'a has a higher chance of being answered. Another hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that the fasting person at the time of iftar, before opening their fast, the du'a they make at that time is not rejected. Furthermore, Aisha radhiyallahu anha, she asked the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that if I had to recognize Laylatul Qadr. What du'a should I make? And he taught her that important du'a that we all know. Allahumma inna ka'afoon tuhibul afu fa'afu anni. But some of the commentators say that why did she ask what du'a should I make instead of what ibadat should I do? And their conclusion was because this is a time when du'as are answered. So she wants to know what is the best du'a to make at the time when du'as are answered. So when we take all of these ahadiths together, we can conclude that the month of Ramadan Between the blessings of Ramadan itself, the blessings of of the last one third of the night, the blessings of the time of iftar, the blessings of Laylatul Qadr, and the blessings of fasting, and even the blessings of sadaqah, because most of us, inshallah, increase now sadaqah in Ramadan. When you put all of this together, the potential of our du'as being answered skyrocket. And so this Ramadan, I want us to to truly make du'a to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. And for those of us who have never sat and made du'a from the heart, let this Ramadan be the time where we do this for the first time. You know, sometimes our acts of worship become ritualized; they become cultural. And for some people, du'a just becomes raising your hands while the imam says something in Arabic that you do not understand, and you're dreaming and you just say "Amin," and you think that that's all there is to du'a. But no, du'a is a direct line of communication between you and your Creator. Dua is a potential for changing your destination. It is your direct means of asking Allah for miracles, for asking Allah to open the doors to that which the doors seem completely shut. And dua can be made in any language. When you are sitting at the time of iftar, waiting to open your fast, you can make dua in any language. When you are awake at the time of of the Hajj, waiting to eat suhoor, you can make dua in any language. While you are fasting and you see you've got some time and you want to do extra ibadat, you can make dua in any language. And I really want us all this Ramadan to increase in our dua, heartfelt, sincere dua in our own languages, 
where we communicate directly to Allah. We complain only to Allah and we ask Allah for exactly what we want and what we need. Even if it seems impossible, even if it seems like it, it will require a miracle. But we ask Allah because we know only Allah can give us miracles. Only Allah can give us what we want. Only Allah can change destiny. And so the importance of dua in Ramadan is something that we should not take for granted. And each of us should take some time to think about what do I want to ask Allah for this Ramadan. And if you find it difficult to remember on the spot, maybe write it down. Make a list of the things you want to ask Allah for. And it can be anything. Passing your exams, getting a better job, barakah in your business, getting married, moving to another place, whatever it is. Anything that you feel would benefit you, whether in terms of deen or dunya, you can ask Allah for it. And Allah, when He answers our du'as, He answers it in one of three ways. Either He gives us what we want, or He gives us something better than it, or He saves the reward of that du'a for the Day of Judgment. In any case, you are not wasting time by making du'a because there's always some khair that comes to you from that du'a. I want us very briefly to go over the etiquettes and manners of du'a so that the chances of our du'as being answered are increased. And these etiquettes and manners, they're not compulsory. You don't have to do it. But the more you do, the more of the etiquettes and manners you do, the higher the chance of the dua being answered. So from the etiquettes and manners of dua is to be in a state of wudu and to face the qibla. Right? To be in a state of wudu and facing the qibla. Again, you don't have to do it. You can make dua at any time. You can be lying in bed in the middle of the night and you can just make dua. But from the etiquettes is to make wudu and then to face the qibla and to raise your hands. To raise your hands is from the sunnah and from the etiquettes of dua. And you can make dua without raising your hands. But again, the more etiquettes you do, the more the chances of it being answered. From the ethics of, uh, etiquettes of dua is that you begin with tahmid wa salawat. You begin with praising Allah and sending salawat upon Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So you begin your dua with any wording of the tahmid and salawat. You can say alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah. You can extend it, you can add more words to it. You can use any form of tahmid or salawat. But the, the sunnah is to begin with these wordings. Right? So you are praising Allah before you ask Allah for anything. And you are sending salawat upon the most beloved to Allah. That also increases the chances of your dua being answered. And so this is from the etiquettes of dua. From the etiquettes of dua, the internal etiquettes, is that you make dua consciously and sincerely. You're not absent-minded, you're not thinking about something else, you are present with your heart in your dua. From the internal etiquettes of dua, is that you have full hope and optimism that Allah will answer your dua. So you're not sitting there saying, Oh Allah, you know, help me to pass my exams, but in your heart you're thinking, oh, Allah is not really going to help me. You don't make dua like that. You have full hope and conviction that Allah will answer my dua. And you are completely optimistic when you make that dua. From the internal etiquettes of making dua is that you only think good thoughts of Allah. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states in the Hadith al-Qudsi, I am as my servant thinks of me. I am as my servant thinks of me. So if you are making dua while thinking the worst of Allah, your dua is not going to be answered. But if you are making dua thinking the best of Allah, then inshallah you will get what you ask for. From the ethics of du etiquettes of dua is that you repeat the dua three times. And we see most of the sunnah duas, you have to repeat them three times. So even when you're making your own dua, you repeat it three times. Right? So in instead of just saying, Oh Allah, help me pass my exams, you say it three times. From the etiquettes of dua is that you link it to the names of Allah that directly match what you are asking for. And to do this, you have to learn the names and attributes of Allah. And how many of us have studied the names of Allah and how many of us have taught our children the names of Allah? It's very important that we know who Allah is and that we call upon Him by the appropriate name for whatever we are asking for. So if you are asking for an increase in risk, you call upon Ar-Razak. Ar-Razak, the one who provides. If you are asking for forgiveness, you call upon at tawab the acceptor of repentance. If you are asking for mercy, you call upon Ar-Rahman, the perfectly merciful. Whatever you are asking for, you call upon Allah by the name that is, at, well, that is closest attributed to what you are asking for. The one that has the most impact on what you are asking for. 
But to do this, we must learn the names and attributes of Allah. Finally, a very overlooked important condition for the acceptance of dua that many people neglect is that our income and our food is halal. Now, the food being halal part, alhamdulillah, we take care of it, right? But too often we neglect the income being halal part. As Muslims, you must make sure that our money is halal. And this directly affects our dua. In a very famous hadith, such an important hadith that is actually in a Nawawi's Fatih hadith compilation. Right? Imam Nawawi saw this hadith as important enough to put in his Fatih hadith. He mentions that the Prophet wasallam recited the verse of the Quran where Allah commanded the prophets to eat that which is pure. And he said, Allah has commanded you with what he has commanded the prophets. That we eat from that which is pure. And then the Prophet ﷺ gave us a parable or an example. He said, imagine a man who is lost in the desert while traveling. And his clothes are dirty and he is hungry and he is in a state of desperation. And he raises his hands and asks Allah for help. But his money is haram. And his food is haram. And his clothes are haram. So the Prophet ﷺ said, how will Allah answer his dua? Or why would Allah answer his dua? This hadith teaches us. That the acceptance of our du'as is conditional on our income being halal. And so sometimes we may be going through portions of our life where we don't find any of our du'as answered. Perhaps it's time to take a step back and look at our sources of income and ensure that there's no riba, there's no haram sources of income, uh, there's nothing in there that is displeasing to Allah or that brings about the curse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So understand that the acceptance of du'a is directly linked to the how halal your wealth is and this is a very important aspect of it that we often neglect so to summarize we learned today that Ramadan is a month when du'as are answered and we also learned that for our du'as to be answered we need to make our du'as in a way that is as per the sunnah right in a way that is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and per the sunnah. And from the etiquettes we went over, we learned to begin our du'as with praising Allah and sending salawat upon the Prophet wasallam to make wudu, to face the qibla, to raise our hands, to have good thoughts about Allah and to hope best from Allah and to be convinced that Allah is going to answer your du'a. And we said du'a can be made in any language. Du'a can be made in any language. And you can repeat your du'a three times. The sunnah is to repeat the dua three times. And to call upon Allah by His names and attributes that are directly linked to what you are asking for. And finally, we reminded ourselves that from the conditions for a dua to be accepted is that our income and our food are halal. From the conditions for a dua to be answered is that our income and our food are halal. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to reach the month of Ramadan. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to answer our du'as this Ramadan and to grant everyone here that which they need and to help everyone out of their difficulties and to give us all ease. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun. Wassalamu ala mursaleen. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Alhamdulillahi wahda wa salatu wa salamu ala man la nabiya ba'da amma abad wa in asakal hadithi kitabullah wa khayru hadhi hadhi muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa sharul umuri muhdathatuha wa kullu muhdathatin bid'a wa kullu bid'atin dalala wa kullu dalalatin finnar When we are making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we should prime number one we should make dua for ourselves so always begin with yourself whether it's asking Allah for forgiveness for your sins or asking Allah to end your calamities or asking Allah for long life and good health whatever it is but you first make dua for yourself but do not restrict your duas to yourself after making dua for yourself make dua for your family for your spouse your children your parents your siblings make dua for your family and make dua for them by name but don't restrict yourself to that either make dua for your community make dua for the ummah as a whole make dua for anybody you know who's going through difficulty in another hadith the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam told us that when you make dua for somebody else the angels make the same dua for you so don't be miserly with your duas make dua for others think about others at the time of making dua the ummah is not in a good state right now and we don't know whose duas would be answered 
that could ease the problems of the Ummah. So make dua for the Ummah. Remember the people of Palestine in your duas. Remember the Muslims who are being oppressed anywhere in the world in your duas. Remember the Muslims in India who are on the verge of a, of a catastrophe. Remember them in your duas and ask Allah to grant that land just leadership so that the catastrophe does not happen. Think about Muslims around the world who are facing difficulty, who are facing problems and make dua for them. And may, it may be that through the barakah of you making dua for somebody else, that Allah keeps you safe from catastrophe. For caring for the rest of the ummah, Allah protects you as well. I just want to share three du'as from the Qur'an and Sunnah that I believe we all can benefit from making a regular habit of, of making these du'as. Number one is the most comprehensive du'a in the Qur'an. In Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches us this du'a, رَبَّنَا آتِنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا حَسَنَا وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ حَسَنَا وَقِنَا عَذَابَ النَّارِ Oh my Lord, O oh our Lord, grant us the best of this world and the best of the next world and protect us from the hellfire. So this dua is comprehensive. Right? You're asking Allah for the best of this world. Iman, guidance, a good life, halal, risk, everything's inclusive. The best of this world. And the best of the afterlife, which is Jannah. Right? Jannah. So that's what you're asking for when you say the best of the next life. You want the highest levels of Jannah. And you're asking Allah for protection from the hellfire. So this is a all comprehensive dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches us in Surah Al-Baqarah. Then in Surah Al-Furqan, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches us another dua, the dua of the pious for their families. And I want us to learn this dua and to make it a regular habit to make this dua for our families. And that is the dua, Rabbana hablana min azwajina wa zurriyatina kurrata a'ayun waj'alna lil muttaqina imama. Which translates as, O oh my, O oh our Lord, grant us such spouses and children who will be the coolness of our eyes and make us leaders of the righteous. So there's two parts to, to this dua. The first is that your spouse and your children become the coolness of your eyes, which means they become your source of pleasure in this world. That your spouse and children are the primary source of joy you have in this world. And number two, you're making dua for yourself and your spouse and your children. Allah makes all of you the leaders of the righteous. Meaning that you all become truly pious people. This is the dua mentioned in Surah Furqan where Allah describes the qualities of Ibadur Rahman. Those who truly worship our Rahman. This is one of the qualities that they regularly make this dua. So let us regularly make this dua. The third dua I want to mention is found in a hadith where the Prophet taught us a dua to make for protection from poverty. It's a very important dua that we should make regularly. And that is, Allahu makfini bi halalik an haramik wa agnini bi fadlika amman siwak. Allahu makfini bi halalik an haramik wa agnini bi fadlika amman siwak. This dua translates as, Oh Allah, make halal sufficient for me against the haram. Meaning, grant me such halal risk that I'm not tempted towards haram. Wa aghnini bi fadlika and make me independent to your grace from everybody besides you. Grant me financial independence. Let's see what the dua is for. You're asking Allah for financial independence. Make me independent of everyone besides you. Because we can never be independent of Allah. Allah is the only one who is al ghani truly independent. We all depend on Allah for our risk. So we ask Allah to make us independent of everyone besides Him. So these are some of the du'as from the sunnah that we can revive in our lives, that we can make this Ramadan, and that we should make part of our habit for both in and out of Ramadan because these are very comprehensive du'as that cover every aspect of life. From our risk to our akhirah to our families, all covered in these du'as. So we ask Allah to allow us to reach Ramadan and to allow and to answer our du'as and to relieve us from our calamities and to grant us ease. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa qina adab al-nar wa Rabbana hablana min azwajina wa zuriyatina kurrata a'yun wa jalna lil muttaqina imama Allah makfina bi halalik an haramik wa agnina bi fadlika amman siwak Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun wa salamun al-mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen aqimis salah